strike while the iron is hot. One of one, don't follow flocks. Man, I got this on lock. Team Harvey, team hustle, team can't be stopped. Just cop 900, blow it. Yeah, I'm fresh out the shop. Let's call it bowling. I'm an expert on the lane. Yeah. Smooth approach, about to roll a perfect game. Huh? And well connected with the sport's biggest names. Love. We can't talk unless an X on the frame. I'm here asking the questions, clear the air and confusion. Fresh, humble, and arrogant with the logo infusion. Red cup for the right vibe. I got the answers you going live for both sides. Yo, 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 yo. Good evening, good evening, man. I am your host, Mr. Bowtie himself, Brandon Grant, man. I hope everyone is doing well. Uh, I had a great day here in Southern California, man. It was 95, man, and uh, whew, we're still kind of smoking right now. But like I said, I hope everyone had a great day, a great Tuesday. Hope everyone is staying safe. Like I said, they're opening more and more stuff. Please, please, please be careful. Please, man, because COVID has not disappeared. Just know it has not disappeared yet. Uh, tonight's guest, man, he uh, I ran across him and met him, um, I'd say some years back at a tournament um, somewhere out of state, maybe in Vegas. I can't really put a finger to it, but you guys know him. He's talked to many of you guys at different tournaments because he always has a booth set up uh, pushing his brand. And um, we're going to talk to him about that today. And we're going to talk to him about, you know, just life in general. Um, hey, so no further ado, I'm going to bring my boy Ron Hicklin to the hot seat on Going Live with Bowtie. What's up, brother? What's going on, Mr. Bowtie? Man, bro, I can't complain. Um, dude, just maxing and relaxing and trying to live my best life, brother. I like that. I like that. Yeah, man. How's everything on your end, bro? Good, man. Things are well. Uh, you know, just just uh, grinding, you know, doing what we do. So uh, definitely a different situation than maybe we would have thought it would have been. But overall, uh, we're doing OK. We're doing all right. That's what's up there, man. That's what's up. Uh, dude, uh, like I said, guys, if, uh, hit that share button. Ron Hicklin is on here. Uh, great guy. Very informative. But we're going to put him in the hot seat, y'all. Y'all know what we do when you come on the show. All is all, but it's love. But we're gonna put him in a hot seat and let's make it happen. Hey, what up, DP? So yeah, so man, we're gonna make it happen. My first question coming out the gate: do you love the game of bowling or do you just like the people and the corrupt that camaraderie that you that you've created? So bowling's been a passion of mine since I was a kid, man. My dad introduced me to bowling when I was maybe like two or three years old, going to the bowling center with him. And um, I didn't really start getting serious with bowling until I was 10. But uh once I started getting serious, I kind of fell in love with it. And it's been like that ever since. Like my whole plan from day one was to stay in bowling. At one point it was like, well, maybe I could be a professional bowler. But I realized that that aspiration wasn't going to happen. Uh, and I was lucky enough to meet a bowling ball designer pretty early on too, like when I was about 14. So uh, that kind of set me on my path to to go to design bowling balls that I ended up, what I ended up doing. And um, I would say that at the end of the day, like this is my A, B, and C plan. Like this is all I got bowling. You know what I'm saying? So I love it with all my heart. I do everything I can every day to try to make it better. And uh, that's that's kind of the reason why why uh, oh, I'm still around in bowling. So I, I just love the sport. So why do you feel your aspirations for bowling on tour just wasn't there or it wouldn't happen? So, I mean, really, it kind of came down to looking at some of the logistics of it, right? So like the money on tour wasn't, wasn't really where I wanted it to be, you know, for what I was looking for, for my life. Right. Um, when I actually went out on tour and, and saw these people and talked to these people, these people that I, that I adored, that I, you know, followed, that I liked, that I, you know, all those kind of things. Um, I was like, man, this is really cool, but I think I have a, a different purpose. Like this isn't, this isn't my purpose. And it's cool to watch people live out their dreams. So it doesn't really matter whether you're a professional bowler or whether you're uh, a janitor, it doesn't really matter if you're doing something that you love, it's no longer like work. Right. So right. for me, it was like, well, all right, well, I, I can be a good bowler. I was a good bowler. Um, uh, I made a lot of money bowling, but at the same token, it wasn't going to be, it wasn't going to be able to let me get to all the aspirations that I had. I really, really, really like helping people. And in order to do that, uh, for me, you know, it's about using my, using my engineering talents to be able to help people. So that means maybe not so much professional bowling, maybe more something on the industry side of things. Right. Okay. Hey, growing up, when you were in school, what was your dream job? Everyone had their career like, oh, when I grow up, I'm going to be this. 
What was yours? So here's my story, right? So I actually did a whole TED talk about this, by the way. So at 14, I met a bowling ball designer and I thought he was really cool. And I was like, well, like, how do you get to be a bowling ball designer? And he was like, well, you know, if you want to do the cover stock, that's chemical engineering. If you want to do the core, it's mechanical engineering. And, you know, you, you really got to work hard because there's very few people that do this. You know, there's like four or five in the whole world that design bowling balls. Wow. So I was like, huh. OK, so I worked in a pro shop uh, when I was 15 and I really, you know, studied bowling balls and studied, you know, all I could about bowling. And I would call the manufacturers up and just ask some questions about bowling balls and stuff like that. And when it was all said and done, uh, I was like, OK, so I'm going to go to school uh, at an engineering school and I'm going to get me a degree in, chem in chemical or mechanical engineering. So I wrote all this down because there was this paper that I had to write in high school. and It was what are you going to do with your life? Right. And by the time I was 18, I knew I'm like, I'm going to go to school. I'm going to go to Purdue. I'm going to get a degree in chemical or mechanical engineering. I'm going to go design bowling balls. And everybody's mm -hmm. like, what? Design <laughs> we gonna design, what are you talking about? Right. Anyway, so I knew from an early age kind of what I wanted to do uh, from that one that one encounter. And uh, I was fortunate enough to be able to do that for uh, almost 15 years. Wow. That that is dope there, dude. Like and that, that, it's hard. It's like it's not very easy to say by the age of 18, you knew where you wanted to go already, you know, because it's people still at the age of 40 and still don't know what way their life is going to take them. So for you to know that at a young age, man, and for you to just grind, grind, grind and continue to make that success, big ups to you, bro. Appreciate that. You know, one uh, an interesting thing about that, too. So when I was in college, I actually had some internships at General Motors, right? Uh -huh. And one of the cool things or interesting things about that is I, I, I will never forget this till I die. So there was a there was a I, I was a supervisor. So in the summer, the supervisors take over or the interns take over for the supervisors that are taking vacation. And there was a guy that worked for me technically, and his name was Roy. Uh -huh. Roy, Roy had a Roy made about two hundred two hundred thousand dollars in General Motors. Roy had a fancy boat. Roy had a Corvette. Roy had a big house. Roy, I mean, Roy was living this life that I thought that I wanted to live. I'm like, he's got all the the things that I want. Like, this is what I want to do. Right. So I talked to Roy one day. It was uh, it was like over a holiday. Maybe it was July 4th, a holiday, because we both had to be there or whatever. And I was like, Roy, I'm like, man, like, like you got the light. This is what I want when I when I grow up. And yeah. He was like, you don't. And I said, what do you mean? He said, he said, I have all these things. I have a boat, I have a house, big house, I got a nice car, I got, you know, all these things, but I can't enjoy them. And I said, well, why not? He said, well, how do you think I pay for them? He said, I have to work these Saturdays and these Sundays and these holidays to get this time and a half and double time and triple time to pay for all those things. He says, so honestly, Ron, he's like, I mean, I have all these things, but it's not, I don't enjoy my life because I, because I can't do anything to enjoy them because I have to work to pay for them. Right. Right. Whoa, maybe there's something to that. So when I graduated college, I had three different offers. I had got an offer from Ebonite. I had got an offer from Anheuser-Busch. And I had an offer from General Motors, General Motors. Okay. So when it came time for me to make the decision, the Ebonite offer was by far the lowest, like by far the lowest. But... I remember that conversation with Roy and the General Motors offer was the was the second highest and Anheuser-Busch was the highest. But I remember right. that, that conversation with Roy where he was like, man, like you got to do something you love. You got to do something you enjoy. Don't don't chase the money. Like, don't chase the money. So I was like, oh, OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I took the Ebonite offer and, and went with it. And I'll never forget that because at the end of the day, when I was there uh, at Ebonite, I always felt like I wasn't working. Like I always felt like it wasn't working. I didn't mind going in early. One of the very, very, very first products I worked on, I had to go in uh, and take these bowling balls in and out of an oven, like two or three hundred of them there on these massive racks. There's a gigantic oven. Right. Take them in and out every two hours, all day, 24 7. Like 24 7. So I didn't say that all day. It was all, I had to do it all in the evening. So, like during the day when the plant was there, people were doing it there. But I lived in Hopkinsville. And I had to, I was the one in the evening that would do it. So every two hours I would get up, go to the plant, swap these balls out, and then go back home and go to sleep. Wow. And I, and it, I was fine with it though. Like I was cool with it. Like I was cool with it. And and over over time, what happens is is you start to you really start to 
uh, do more because you're enjoying it. So because you're doing more, because you're enjoying it, you can you're you're better, right? You're you excel right. faster. And you know, I, I was able to 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 move up in that company very quickly because of that. Wow. Hey, look, look, we got first question. Hey, TP said, tell the fans about CTD and what does it mean and what products are available. Man, so look, so like so CTD creating the difference is really an education company. So I want to make sure that people understand that. We always say that, especially in a lot of our videos. At the end of the day, I was in a very, very unique position to be able to give, to be able to, to be able to get a lot of information that most people will never get access to. I designed all the cores. I worked with the people that designed the cover stocks. I did all the ball testing. I worked in the manufacturing facility. So I have all this inside information about how bowling balls are created. I worked with the right. pro staff, all that kind of stuff, right? So when we started when we started creating the difference, the whole goal there was to give back to bowling, was to talk about some of this stuff that you learn that can actually help other bowlers. Uh -huh. So that's how the company got formed. It's completely based off of education. Now we got products, right? The products pay the bills. You know, we started with the purple stuff, which was a bowling ball cleaner. Right. Um, but our whole deal with that was, did you know you can use this product while you're bowling? And did you know that keeping your bowling ball clean while you're bowling will make your reaction more consistent? Right. So the whole message was, it wasn't necessarily about the purple stuff. It was more about if you keep your bowling ball clean, keep your reaction consistent, you're going you're gonna to score better. Right. And every product that we've done since um, and everything that we do is geared toward educating the bowler. Because I know for a fact, this, this, is, this is how I'll tell you how I know it too. So I know for a fact that if you get better, you're more likely to stay in the sport of bowling. If we want to grow bowling, that's how you do it. You get people to be better. And I say I know that because that's why I don't like golf. Like I'm not good at golf. <laughs> I can hit the ball. But I don't necessarily know where it's going all the time. And that's frustrating, right? As somebody who's competitive, that becomes frustrating. And I, don't have, I haven't had a coach or somebody come to me and say, hey, well, let's do this and let's do that and try to work and fix that. So I get frustrated and I, I quit. Yeah. So I'm like, well, I can't do that. For, for bowling or for golf, but I can never do it for bowling. So that's where the whole thing came into play. And that's why, um, you know, we do what we do. We, we, we have our own sanding pads, true cut sanding pads, which obviously uh, we, we because I'm an engineer, using my engineering background and a product development background uh, and mindset, you know, we can create products for bowling. So we had a really cool situation where um, we, we worked to went to a supplier, had them help us, how to help, had them help us develop the pads. Yeah. We used, we used our laser surface scanner to prove that it was actually cutting the ball like what it said. We thought that we found that all the other pads weren't doing it. And, you know, it, it just became really, really good. We got a partnership with Turtle Wax. Yep. You know, Turtle Wax helped us make a polish. We have a true cut hand applied polish uh, powered by Turtle Wax. So we got a cool partnership there. Um, and we, we have a lot of stuff, man. At the end of the day, though, it's all geared toward trying to help bowlers become better. And we're always working on that. We're always working in that vein. You know, what can we do to help bowlers get better? That's the key. Okay. Hey, what makes you, what makes CTD, yes, yes, CTD better than all the other brands? Though? All the other brands say, oh, yeah, hey, our stuff cleans bowling balls. Our stuff does this. What makes you, uh, you say, dude, I don't care. Hey, our stuff is the best. So what I say is this, like at the end of the day, I don't care what products you use. You can use ours. You can use anybody else's too. As long as you're using a bowling cleaning product, I mean, I'm cool with that. It's not so much, it's not so much that our ball cleaner is better than everybody else's, right? It's not so much that. It's more, we're going to give you that additional education that you need to get you better. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, cleaning your ball isn't necessarily going to make you better. But if I tell you that, well, did you know that by cleaning your ball, the transition will happen a little bit faster. And as of that, you're going to need to make two and one moves a little bit earlier. That may help you. That may get you, that may get you to that next level. Or if we're having a conversation about our sanding patch and say, Hey man, did you know that, you know, you're using your bowling ball, but, but within three to five games, your ball is going to go from whatever grit you sanded it at to 4,800. So it's going to roll different no matter what you do. So right. as a result, of that, it's important to put that 2000 surface back on your bowling ball again and keep that reaction consistent. But, oh, I didn't know that. So it's more about the educational component for us more so than the product piece. Cause like you said, everybody makes ball cleaners. The sanding pads a little bit different because when we built those sanding pads, they were built specifically for bowling. Right. Um, the other products we have are, are a little bit unique. We've got a, a, a restoration product called the clear. It's very unique. So we got some unique products in there too, but at the end of the day, none of that matters unless I can help you become a better bowler. So that's where the, that's where the product and the, 
information and the development all kind of all kind of intersects. It's all about getting people to become better bowlers. If you become a better bowler, you're gonna bring your boy. If your boy joins, then maybe he'll get somebody else to join. And before you know it, everybody's joining. That happens. We all get to eat. There you go. Hey, that's a good answer there, bro. Hey, Sherry Stingley from up north. She said, how did you choose the color palette for your brand? So the black and green. So that actually started a long time ago. So basically. I told you, we all have a story, bro. And Oh, yeah. It's good. So basically, basically, like like 2013 or 2014, somewhere right around there, um, I kind of wanted to start something with the brand. I didn't know what. So I was like, well, I'll just I'll do my name. I'll do Ronald Hicklin. So uh, I actually had went and looked at several different companies that I liked and saw yep. what kind of colors they had. And I was like, oh, man, this black and neon green is dope. I like that. So maybe we can do my stuff in black and in black and neon green. So I had a website called RonaldHicklin.com and we built a little website and it was really geared toward the same thing. This is what's kind of cool about it. It was geared toward STEM, which stands for science technology, engineering, and math, right? So it was me using bowling as a way to educate people about STEM. So, uh, and the website theme was all black and neon green. So ultimately when we ended up doing it, when we ended up doing the creating a difference thing, it was like, well, we still like the black and green. So why don't we roll those as our colors and boom, there it was. Okay. Uh, Frederick William J uh, Williams Jr. With all the success CTD has had in the first five years, where do you see the company in the next five years? So Fred has actually been so Fred. So this is the this is one of the cool parts about what we do. Fred is a, is one of our staffers, right? We have about three thousand staffers, and that's where a lot of this additional education comes into play. Fred's been down since like day one, so he's kind of known what we've been doing. So it's kind of cool to see him jump on here. But basically, what I what the whole goal of CTD be, CTD has been from day one is to be the authority when it comes to this bowler education component. That's what we want to do. I want to be able to if you are a bowler and you need help. I want to be the the guy. I want to be part of the company that helps you become a better bowler. Whether you use our products or whether you don't, I really don't care. At the end of the day, I want you to become a better bowler. I've got information that most people don't have. I can share that information freely with you, and I can use that to help you become a better bowler. That's what it's all about. So I think you know, within the next five years, that is our goal. Our, our goal is to expand. Our goal is to do some things that will allow us to be able to offer more education to a larger group. Uh, our goal is to continue to grow our staff and be able to continue to get people to to know about the product, to get to know about the information, to be able to understand where they can actually teach other people. Right. Because that's part of it. too. If you really want to grow, you got to be able to teach other people what you do. So one of the very, very first things that we do anytime, anytime we launch a product or anything of that nature is we write a blog. And the blog is the is the how and the why and the what. Why are we doing this product? What is it supposed to do? And how is it going to help me become a better bowl? Right. Every time I watch a product, that's the first thing that we do. Uh, and then we, you know, we do the, the rest of the stuff with the social media push and YouTube and you know those kind of things to help give more consumers information. And uh, at the end of the day, that's where the goal is. I believe that if you want to fix, if you want to grow, if you want to help the sport, it's got to be in help people get better. Okay. Hey, that's what's up there. Um, you say you have like 3,000 staff members. Mm -hmm. How do you become a staff member on CTD, on Team yeah. CTD? Man, real easy, real easy, bro. So all you got to do is go to the website, ctdbowling.com. When you go there, you're going to see these four little these four little circles pop up at the top. One of them says staff. You click that button, you get to the staff options. There's two options. The first option, what I tell people always to do is the regional option. Regional option is free. It costs you nothing. You get to get into our private Facebook group. That's the kicker. Because in there, you can ask any question you want. If you have a physical game question and you want to – here's a video of me bowling. Tell me what you think. We have a policy where only certified USBC coaches can answer those questions. Okay. So it won't be you no know, just anybody saying whatever they think. There's There has to be a certified coach answer your physical game question. If you got any other question about bowling, ask away. It's a kid. It's a kid friendly group. You know, no, no crazy talk, no drama, no, none of that kind of stuff. It's a very tight knit group. And effectively, that's where a lot of this free education just comes from. People ask questions. We answer people ask questions. We answer. And it's all about trying to do that same thing. 
help people become better. So it's real easy. It's free to join. If you like the products and you like using them, then we have a national staff program. The national staff program is a paid subscription program. You pay a fee and every month you get unique items. So like I said, I tell people, look, if you don't, if you want to try it before you buy it, like if, if it was me and I was a new consumer, I would try it before I buy it. You right. go to the website, go to the staff page, get on the regional staff, get in a group and watch what we do. Watch what happens in there. It's, <laughs> it's just real, real cool. We And because of the way the company is built, we, we take a very active role in listening to what our staffers say. Our staffers help shape products for us. Like they help shape the direction we go. Right. Our help, staffers help guide us. With, uh, with some of the educational pieces that we come out with. So a lot of it is really set and geared to, once again, help the bowler. Okay. Hey, Novella, what up, Novi? She said, how did it feel to be on the cover of Black Enterprise working for an industry that was not as popular? What's going on, Novella? Oh, man, that was amazing. That was probably one of the one of the coolest things that I was able to do when I was at Ebonite. Um, Because what it did was it allowed bowling to get some more exposure in a in a in an environment that it doesn't get a lot of exposure you know what i mean right um, they came to me with with you know say hey, we want to do this thing you know they didn't say nothing about a magazine cover they said we're doing an article on people that are have these cool jobs in stem fields so we want to add you in it so they came in we talked we chopped it up we did a video we did a, a photo shoot and then after they heard the whole story of how i got into it then they came back and was like, "Yo, we can put you on the cover." And I was like, "What?" <laughs> so, I mean, that was it was real, real cool. Um, I'll never forget. I was walking in the airport and I looked over at the, you know, you, you walk in the airport, you see the magazine company, the magazines, all the yeah. magazines up there. And I look over there and I was like, "That's me! Like that's me right there!" Holy cow! But it was man, it was awesome. That was awesome. Um, but for me, it was the same thing, right? It was it was trying to it was trying to get people, especially black people, right? Oh yeah, to get into these fields, there's not enough people of color in science, technology, engineering, and math. So I was really trying to, to work that angle and show that you know you can have a cool job, like you know I was doing the bowling stuff. So you can have a cool job, and this is kind of what it entails. So, at the end of the day, I didn't really realize this, but really, my whole adult life has really been about trying to educate people. I didn't know that, and I wouldn't have said that uh, if you would have asked me that you know six years ago. But at the end of the day, when I look back, when I reflect back, it's always been about that. It's always been about, well, you have information and you can help people. Why don't you? Whether it was professional bowlers uh, getting their first title or their 10th title, or whether it was uh, the, you know, Sally at League giving her a few tips on what she could do to help you know her game a little bit better. So it's always been that way. I just didn't realize that. Hey, that's what's up. Hey, Tyrone Julian, he's from down here in you know, Southern Cali. Say, as a, do you offer any bowling clinics? So absolutely, same thing, man. Go to the website, ctdbowling.com. If you if you click, you'll see like three little lines. If you click those three little lines, a whole a whole menu pops up, and one of the options there is clinics. But we do, I mean, so like we do a lot of that too. And that's one of the keys I think is is important too, right? Is being able to do clinics, being able to do seminars. Uh, I mean, I've been blessed to be able to do seminars all over the world. Right. Uh, talking about bowling. Yeah, talking about bowling talking about uh, things that are related to bowling. So, you know, it's 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 a blessing and an honor to be able to have that information that I was able to get and to be able to now give that back. And that's what it's about. Like I said, the more people you help, the better the better the sport is. The better the sport is, everybody gets to win. Everybody gets their little piece. People always say, "Well, you know, I need to I need to get my little piece and I need to hold it to me and and I don't need what, well, you know, you can't be on my staff and their staff and you can't do this I'm the dead opposite when it comes to that because I've seen that happen and I've seen how that works in bowling and it's not good. Right. So for me, it was like, let's make our staff inclusive. If you want to be on 900 global and you want to be with CTD, we're cool with that. If you want to be on, uh, you know, logo infusion, we're, you know, it doesn't matter. We, we are, we are okay with people being on other company staffs and being on our staff. Okay. Man, that's what's up there, bro. Hey, look, I know we've been talking about bowling, bowling, bowling. Ooh, where hey, where are you from? Born and raised. So I was originally so I was born and raised in Marion, Indiana. And actually Ronnie Russell's from Marion, Indiana. Me and Ronnie Russell grew up together. Okay. 
Um, so that's where I was born and raised at. And, you know, I, you know, I went to Mary High School. My dad actually was the principal of the high school I went to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that was interesting. Um, oh, yeah, big time. Yeah, it was interesting for sure. Uh, but, I, you know, I, I, so, like, I kind of use it to my advantage, right? Like every now and again, I'd be late to class or whatever. So I'd be like, oh, dad, you know, pops, I need a, you know, a pass or whatever. He'd be like, you ain't get no pass. You late, you, you late, you, you're gonna be late. Go get your tardy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'll see you at home later. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, uh, but but uh, it was good. It was good. Uh, my mom and dad were very supportive of the bowling thing uh, the whole time, too. You know, just kind of my mom was the one that would run us all around because my dad was always bowling, too. So my dad's been bowling his whole life. He would always go, you know, go to tournaments or whatever. And yeah, when we were little, my mom would, you know, do stuff with us and we did everything. I did baseball, I did, uh, I did track, I did a whole lot of things. Um, but ultimately I kind of started to fall in love with the bowling thing and, you know, I just started running with it. Hey, that's what, do you have any other siblings, any siblings? I got, I got a younger brother, a three year, uh, uh, my brother's three years younger than me. And we did the same, he did the same thing too. He, he said, they did all the little sports and kind of fell back into bowling. Okay. Now does he help you with CTD? Is he part of that, that whole? No, so, no. So he was in the, he was in the military. He's retired military now. So he's just kind of like helping out and just enjoying life. Uh, pretty much he doesn't really do a whole lot more a whole lot on this side with ctd um but you know at the end of the day it's, it's kind of one of those things where like you figure out where you want to go what you want to do and then that's what you do you my go. mom and dad on the other hand is a little different my mom and dad help out uh to this day they're very involved uh, they're yeah. on the payroll I, I know mom and pop i see them you know at tournaments and all over the place so for yeah. sure i know that yeah they're on the payroll man well, everybody see them. Yeah, that's for sure. Let's see here. We got some other questions here. Look, DP said, uh, talk about your YouTube channel and elaborate on your video you posted today. Uh, what's going on, DP? Man, I appreciate you, bro, by the way. First off, he he, he does a lot of stuff kind of like just, you know, posting the stuff that I post or whatever and sharing oh, it around. Absolutely. Definitely appreciate that. Uh, so... My YouTube channel is just my name, Ronald Hicklin, and and that is a place for me to be able to continual, continually put out content for people to watch uh, or information. Um, the video I got to think about the video I posted today. I think the video I posted today was me at a bowling center. I think it was me at a bowling center. Let me let me look that up real quick while we're talking. So um, anyway, at the end of the day, the whole point of my YouTube channel is it's the same thing. It's a platform to try to educate people. So that's what we do. Yeah, that's what it was. So. I, the video was titled "Changes You May See When You Get Back to Bowling." So, oh, I didn't see that. So we are CTD is a sponsor of the Derby Bowling Tournament, the Louisville Derby Bowling Tournament. This is a tournament I've bowled since I was maybe 16 years old. Oh, wow. uh, so it's really cool to be able to be a you know be a sponsor, and we had a just gigantic banner there. It's really cool. I'm just really excited about that. But anyway, what I was talking about was changes when we come back to bowling. Changes you'll be able to see. And I've been able to see that being in Kentucky, being in Tennessee, went to Georgia to see all the different kind of changes you're going to see. Um, you know, at the end of the day, the bowling centers have to make the patrons feel comfortable. The bowling center staffs were wearing, wearing masks. Uh, at that particular bowling center, they've actually got a hand sanitizing stations every three or four lanes. And I think that the bowling centers are doing the right thing to keep people safe. Uh, the social distancing thing, that bowling center there is huge. So they won't have an issue with that. Um, and they were able to, you know, they're able to space people out. And I think that's really important that that people feel safe because the safer they feel, the more likely they are to come back. And on that same note, so like we were like, uh, we were like, well, what can we do to help? So one of the things that we did was we got a mask. Well, I don't like mask. Like I, I, I put a mask on, I can't breathe and I'm claustrophobic and I'm like, oh, this is terrible. So right. I was like, well, we got to find a mask that that I would be willing to wear. So I had an N95. You seen the N95 mask, the white one with the thing on it? Oh, yeah. man. That thing is like, you know, that's like if you're like painting a house or like you're going into like, you know, a, a, a hospital room, right? Right. No good. So then I tried some of the cloth mat. No good. So I ended up, we ended up, I probably tried like 30 or 40 masks until I found one that I liked. Wow. And then once I liked it, I said, well, let's go do some testing. So we went biking in it. I went running in it, which by the way, there's no mask that I found you can run in. That, that just doesn't happen. But biking, biking running, bowling, and uh, weightlifting, just to kind of see if, if I could still breathe or not. Right. We found a mask, we liked it, we put our logo on it, and we started selling them like crazy. So one of the things that we're 
big into doing is, is trying to solve problems. When we see problems, trying to solve them. Um, so same thing with the USB-C rule change. USB-C made a rule change less than a month ago where they said, hey, look, because of all the things going on with COVID, uh, the CDC says that isopropyl alcohol is approved to kill COVID and other viruses and bacteria. So we're right. going to let, let bowlers use that on their ball every shot. So I was like, all right, cool. Well, we, we have connections with a lot of chemical companies. So I called up one of my chemical companies and was like, yo, can I get some isopropyl alcohol? And they're like, well, everybody wants that right now. Like, it's super high demand. Right. And I actually went, I actually went to six or seven different places looking for it and couldn't find it. But he's like, but since you're a, since you're, you've been a longtime customer of ours, we'll get you some, no problem. So we ended up getting me something like a week and we put that on the website and we've been selling it like crazy too. Uh, at the end of the day, man, it's just about trying to solve problems, right? If you can, if you can solve problems, then it all kind of works out on it, on its own. So, I mean, it's just, that's what it's about. Like, that's what it's all about. Helping bowlers, solving problems. You can do those two things. Life's good. Wow. Hey, Michael Sutton has, uh, he said, good evening, Ron. Uh, are we planning on sponsoring a big national televised tournament in the near future? So CTD is a official partner of the PBA. We spent a lot of money with the PBA. Uh, CTD also has three PBA national staffers. Uh, we have Ryan Simonelli. He was first. Uh, then we signed uh, EJ Tackett. And then uh, last, we just got uh, Michael Martell. He's kind of an up-and-coming guy. He's a young, younger kid, fresh yeah. out of college. He had back-to-back -back 300s uh, at the World Series of Bowling. Um, but we've got – so we've made an investment in these organizations – uh, in that organization specifically, in terms right. of sponsoring a national event, not yet. Uh, I've got a few other plans up my sleeve to really grow the brand and grow the business to give back to bowling more, and then we'll probably go that route. Uh, along those same lines, man, like that's one of the cool things too. We we actually spend a lot of money investing in bowling organizations. So we're a sponsor of the of the PBA. Uh, we are a sponsor of the TMBA. We've sponsored the UBA. Uh, we look for those kind of relationships that we can build with other companies or other organizations to try to do the same thing. Help grow bold. There you go. Man. That's what's up, man. Uh, what's this? Novella, I really feel like you're trying to educate people as an attractive asset for you. Okay. DP, we want to see you in Michigan soon. Huh. Uh, uh oh, Wanda Parker, you in trouble? We still wait. Still waiting on that conversation. I'm I see that, no doubt. That's we definitely will have that conversation sooner rather than later, Wanda. Yeah, yeah. You, Wanda, stop trying to punk people. I mean, she always trying to punk somebody. I like Wanda. I like Wanda. No, Wanda is good people. Let's see. With all the success you've had so far, what's the greatest accompl accomplishment to date? Yikes. Uh, <laughs> that's tough, bro. Like that was actually a hard question. Um, I don't know, man. I, I think that I think that figuring out how to get a company off the ground from zero, right? You know, five years ago, CTD didn't exist. There right. was no plan for CTD. I didn't plan on doing that. Um, it 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 kind of came together. Um, but just being able being able to stay in bowling and being able to figure out ways to be able to help grow bowling. That's probably the accomplishment I would say. Okay. That's what's up. Hey, Chad Luce says, Hey, what is the best core cover combinations that you feel are most versatile? So, I mean, I think if you look at the balls that are most successful, right? Look at all the balls that are most successful balls that we could name. We could talk about that would make sense. Uh, Black widow, High Road, IQ Tour, Game Breaker, uh, Mission, all those balls, I would say the the RGs, the RG tends to be more in the middle, with the exception of High Road. High Road, the RG is high. Um, but the covers are always middle of the road covers. You don't, anytime you start to get outside the middle of the range of cover stock, aggressiveness, it becomes less and less usable. So when you look at those balls that I just mentioned, they all have a similar type ball reaction. None of them are balls are the biggest looking balls in the group. None of those balls, with maybe the exception of the – maybe the mission was even an HP ball. Most of those balls are mid-price balls. Yes. Or upper-price balls, right? So, right. I mean, middle of the road, because it's got a much 
wider range of usability. That's what those balls tend to work better. And it can be symmetric or asymmetric. I don't think you see a whole lot of really, really high asymmetric balls that are super popular long term. Right. Um, you know, Black Widow is a is a low is on the low end of that scale. It's twelve. Uh, so that's 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 not high by any means. And I think that the balls that are historically that ha, that have lasted lasted a long time that are historically known as good product, they all tend to be relatively round in shape. If you go look at those shapes that we talked about, they're relatively round. High road, basically, it's a ball. V- Vortex two or a game breaker, that is a ball. <laughs> IQ sure is a ball. Uh, mission, not so much. Uh, but there's a lot of balls that kind of have that rounded Black Widow. If you really, really look at Black Widow, it's a ball. Uh, <laughs> most people don't think of that. You know, when I say ball, I mean sphere. I mean it's a round shape. It's a round shape. Right, right. But and there's a reason for that. There's a real logistical reason for that. And what is what it is? But there's a reason for that. <laughs> <laughs> we're not designing balls anymore so there's no reason to go there at the end of the day at the end of the day but you just think about it these balls that i mentioned they all kind of have a similar type shape well there's a reason for that <laughs> hey guys y'all see this he yeah he's giving like he's hanging that little fruit for us like this he's dangling it that's what he's doing to us guys he's like he has all this information and he wants to share it but he's just like here you go here you go like we got it though bro Got you. Hey, hey, what's your Kenny Kenny Saxon as? What's your first highest eight hundred series? Uh, first was eight oh three. Highest is like eight thirty five. Um, the only thing I got cool about eight hundreds is I did go back to back eight hundreds in league once. That was fun. Huh. And what was cool about that was is I had two balls. I had two balls. They were drilled the same. One of them was polished and one of them was sanded. And it didn't matter. It was league. This is league bowling. It didn't matter what how where I was how I was bowling. It yeah. was always dull ball the first game. Yeah. Maybe game and a half, maybe maximum two games. And the third game, I was all guaranteed to change balls. I had five sixty-nine turn in the corner and change balls. And my teammates were like, What are you doing? Wow. And I was like, this is what I do every week. I'm not going to stop doing it now. Right. And I just had a good setup to where it was when the doll ball began to hook too early. I could, and I, I had moved in, you know, I'd moved in a little bit. I yeah. could go to the shiny ball, make a, make a three board move back left. And I was good again. So it, that was fun just because I, like I had a system set up using surface to be able to make sure that I could maximize my angle to the pocket. And I average, I, I, I'm almost injured, averaging almost 240 that year when it was all said and done. Wow. And I, and I didn't even bowl. Like, like I average almost 240 and I'm traveling three quarters of the year. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like I come back, I'll bowl four or five weeks and then I'm gone for a month. So it, it was fun. That was fun. Yeah, you're, just, you're just that good. Go ahead and say it. I'm just that good. Nah, bro. <laughs> nah, not, not that good. I'm good enough to be able to be dangerous, but I know – I know where my where my uh, where my where my where my game lies at. So okay, hey Tyrone asked, uh, do you still design bowling balls? No, sir. Have not designed a bowling ball since uh, 2015. A lot of the cores that I designed um, are still in production, which is kind of cool. But um, yeah, I, I don't I don't design bowling balls. And honestly, I don't have a I don't have a desire to do that either. I did that. Like I did it. I had success doing it. Right. I'm on I'm on to the next thing. You know what I'm saying? There you go. Hey, LJ Wright asks, how many bowl, how many balls or cores did you design for Ebonite when you were there? A lot, bro. I mean, more than 500 when it was all said and done. Uh, I did everything from 2001 to 2014. And like I said, there were cores after oh. I was gone. Yeah, there were cores, cores after I was gone that I had designed that were that then came out after that. And I mean, I mean, there's going to be cores now, even with the company, you know, being sold to Brunswick and Brunswick doing it, I'm assuming that they're going to use Black Widow. I'm, I mean, I could be wrong. They may, they may not use Black Widow, but I'm assuming they're going to use Black Widow and I designed that court too. So I am I would say that it's cool because a lot of times, you know, when you do something, when you're done or when it's done, it's over, especially with bowling balls and bowling cores and bowling, you know, bowling balls. But yeah. a couple of pieces that I was able to do there that have some legs to them and are still around in the industry. So I'm pretty proud about that. 
There you go. Hey, see it as, do you screen your CTD staffers? You need to check those who are representing your company. Yeah, so we do that. So a couple of things, right? So when you apply, that doesn't mean you get in. That doesn't mean you get in. Uh, we have a team that goes and looks at your Facebook profile. We look at yeah. all yours you've been posting. If there's things that we don't like, then we'll tell you these things need to go away. Um, and uh, if there's anything that's, you know, it's, that's, that's controversial or going to create issues, what is, we can just flat out say that we're not interested in that and you join our team. It's, it's got to be the right motivation. It's got to be the right motive. You know what I mean? Right. Um, we're looking for people that want to get better at bowling. That's it. I'm not looking for drama. I'm not looking for uh, political views. I'm not looking for any of that stuff. That's for other groups. There are, there are plenty of places you can post all that craziness on, not in that group. And we got specific rules. They're all spelled out. And, and we got we have the rules and the repercussions. They they're all spelled out. So we don't we don't uh, we don't tolerate any of that kind of craziness. Uh, we have and do remove people from staff. You know, if you don't if you ain't following the rules, and not doing the right thing, you can be gone. It's optional to join. It's free. It's optional. Yeah. But you got to play by the rules. And we have kids in our group, so so we're very very cognizant of the kids that we have in our group, and we protect them. So you're not going to be able to come in that group saying wild stuff. You're not going to be able to do that. If you do, right. you'll be gone immediately. And we've got people that monitor and watch that group 24-7. So believe me, if you say something crazy in there, I'm, we're going to know quick. We're going to know real quick. Hey, Michael Sutton said, when will you be on the East Coast near Charlotte? Man, I was in uh, South Carolina last weekend, actually, uh, which isn't – I mean, it's closer than where I am now. I'm in Tennessee right now. But – I travel around a lot, man. I mean, obviously, I try to get to as many places as I can where it makes the most sense. Uh, we have these sponsorships with these companies or with these organizations that I definitely will participate in and be at. Uh, we do a big thing with the military event in Las Vegas. So I'll be there for that for probably most of the month of August um, with, this, with this thing that we have with the Louisville Derby Tournament. I'll be spending a fair amount of time in Louisville. Uh, and then, you know, as some of the other events that come back online, we'll do more of them. We will be doing more TNBA events. We were in with TNBA, then we didn't do stuff with TNBA, and now we're back with TNBA. So when the TNBA a events come back online, we'll be doing a lot more of those events too. So, I, I mean, at some point, we'll, our paths will cross. Okay, there you go. Uh, Jared, Jared Duff asks, do you think your thing will be banned from bowling? No, I think your thing um, is just another tool. And we got, I got, we got at least, at least ten videos on urethane balls to educate people on how to use them, on when you. I did, I posted a video probably last week where we actually did a test at Kegel, where we had one guy. I threw. I'm left-handed, and my and my uh, one of my one of my guys, Dustin. He's uh, he used to bowl on Team USA. He's right-handed, so right. he threw a urethane ball. I threw a reactive ball in the same pattern, so that we would we never crossed, and we bowled three games. And we actually then had Kegel tape the lanes to see how the oil moved. And I did a whole video about it, about what urethane does and how to use it and when to use it and why to use it and all these kind of things. So will it be banned? I don't think so. There's no reason to ban it. Um, it's just another tool. And if you understand how and when to use the tool, it can be com it can be very advantageous. When urethane balls are in play, your whole your rest of your bag is garbage. Right. So you know, but understanding when it's in play, understanding how to get it in play is the key there. And that requires a little bit of education, which is what we what we do. Hmm. There you go. Uh, let's see. Michael Sutton, hey, at the USB National, would you like to add some CTD staff teams bowling in? So basically, if if teams want to be want to, you know, uh, represent CTD, um, we have no issues with that, right? We have no problem with that. We 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 like that. Uh, the people that are on our staff, all they got to do is they know how to reach out and get a hold of us and let us know this is what they want to do, and we give them permission and, and we go with this. Here's something else that's kind of interesting, right? I told you I said we don't we we want to be inclusive, not exclusive, right? So what we do is, if there are shirt companies that want to use our logo, we don't charge for that. Now most companies do charge for that, but if you you know, want to go to this company, you want to go to, I don't, it doesn't, it doesn't make up a name. And as long as they come to us and, and ask us for permission, we give them a list of rules on how to use the logo. We don't want, you know, nothing crazy with it, but uh, we don't charge them for that. So we, we try to work with as many companies as possible. So if somebody wants to, you know, use the CTD name as a team at Nationals, all they got to do is get a hold of us and uh, we can get them permission for that and go on and move on. But yeah, we, we I mean, we're, it's all about trying to grow, but I, I know what it's like to be exclusive. I know what it's like to be um, 
to to want to try to control the people, and I and, I, and it doesn't work. It doesn't work. So right. for me, it's about the opposite of that. It's about well, how do we get more people involved? How do we get you know this this company to 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 to, to jump on board? And and that company asking to use the logo. Well, yeah, let them use the logo. So. We just try to do things a little bit differently in that, like, because, like I said, I, I think there's a lot more success in trying to grow the pie yeah. as opposed to trying to keep and protect your piece of the pie. There you go. Hey, uh, before running your own business, what, uh, uh, like I said, you, what other occupations did you have, and what made you part ways and become your own boss? So, my first job out of college was designing bowling balls. I went right from college. I had. So let me preface that a little bit. So in college, I worked for Storm for a spring break and Ebonite for a spring break at their nationals booth, all with the intent of getting connections on in the industry. Right. Because of those two uh, internships for the week at nationals, that allowed me to be able to obtain an offer from Ebonite. And right out of college, I went to work at Ebonite. So that was my first real job. Uh, prior to that, it was always summer internships, and the sure. summer internships that I had in college were at General Motors, like we talked about. Yeah. So I was oh, I was at Ebonite the whole time from from 2001 all the way to 2015. Um, Ebonite had been having some issues financially, and they were making cuts, and I was part of a of a total layoff of people. They had let people go. Um, it was like me and probably another I don't, I don't know maybe another 12 or 14 people total. Right. So at that point, it was like, well, what are you what are you going to do? And I'll never forget this too. I actually had uh, in my house, I had these gigantic post-it notes that I would write down things, things that I could do. And then every day I would come downstairs and I'd just scratch one of them off. And uh, when it was all said and done, it was like, well, bowling is really all I got. Like, this is all I really know. Yeah. So I need to figure out how to stay in bowling. There you go. I mean, that's what's up there, bro. Hey, what was your first taste of success on the lanes? So probably when I was a kid, I shot, this is sound weird too. I shot 666 <laughs> and they put it in the paper, like in the, in the local paper. Cause that, you know, I don't know. I was like, I was like 11. Right. So you're like, you know, this, this, this young kid, he shot 666, which I'm like, oh, that's the devil's number. But, but you know, but it was, I mean, that was good. And I, and I saw my, my name was in the paper. They did a whole article about it and it was a big deal. Right. And I was, wow. This is really cool. This bowling thing is cool. Maybe I could be a professional bowler. No, no. <laughs> those, those, guys, those guys are unbelievably good. Like you don't know how good they are until you get to work with them. Right. Until you see them actually in action, but they are unbelievably good. Like it is, it's amazing. Cause I've been, I've been out there, you know, at, one of the first things that happened when I got let go was I went to go work for extra frame. So I had a whole series where I got to go work on extra frame as a commentator talking about the bowling. Right. And it's crazy to, to watch and see how good those guys are. Like it's a whole nother level to be a professional bowler. Oh yeah. It's a whole nother level to be a professional anything. Now you get me on a China, it's a different story. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you want to you show up on a China, you know, it, it could go either way, but. If we bow on a pattern, there's no doubt those guys are going to crush, you know. Oh, crush man. So. That's funny. Uh, uh, what is your biggest accomplishment on the lane? And what is your most memorable moment on the lane? Biggest accomplishment on the lane, man. Well, the one, I mean, there's been a couple, but the thing that popped in my mind immediately was I won a doubles tournament with George Gohagen the third. And this was memorable for a couple of reasons. So one, we were bowling pros. Like that's who we were bowling. Yeah. As a matter of fact, uh, one of the pros was a world champ was had just won the world championship like that year. Oh, wow. So uh and me and him qualified like fourth, and we had to kind of go work our way up the ladder. Maybe it was third, doesn't matter. But we ended up bowling all of these pairs that were professional bowlers, and, and we you know we ended up winning, and uh it, it was really it was really good because the timing couldn't have been better. Cause at that particular point in time, I didn't know what I was going to do. So right. we really didn't have any money. I had this nice fat high paying job that I had lost like three months or two or th about three months earlier. And I'm at zero and all I got is bowling. Like that's all I got. 
So yeah. we're going and we're traveling and I'm sponsoring him and we're doing all these things, but it's all to eat at this point. If we don't strike, we don't eat. Right. So uh, the week prior, he actually had, um, he led a tournament. They ended up finishing second there. And the next week, uh, we go bowl this tournament in Detroit, uh, Detroit Cup. And uh, uh, we ended up making a step ladder and running the step ladder to win. So that was probably the thing that popped in my mind because the timing couldn't have been any better. Because, because like I said, at that particular point in time, I didn't know what I was going to do, and being able to being able to strike when you needed to to be able to survive that's yeah. a that's a whole different whole different animal. Which is why I'm also so grateful that I'm not a professional bowler, and I also have so much respect for professional bowlers because that is hard. And it's funny you say that because, um, like, I had a couple shows ago, I had Gerald Johnson on here. And Gerald said, there's no way in hell he would say, I'm going to make this my living, trying to rely on a 10 p.m. for righties or, or a 7 p.m. for lefties to, 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 to provide for my family. Not going to happen. And basically, you just said the same thing. You were out there eating and, you, you know, trying to rely on that strike to say, man, I got a strike right here to, you know, get some money to take home to my family. Not the best. It's not the easiest thing. It, it can be done. It's just very hard. So when we were doing it, we had a good system, um, and, and without question, without having that stint of about seven or eight months there, I would have been in a lot of trouble had we not done that. Um, you know, we we traveled a lot of places, we made a lot of money, we did a lot of things that were that were that were you know survival type things. Right. But ultimately, for me, man, like with all the things that were going on and trying to figure out stuff. Having bowling there was a it, it was a help because it was an outlet. It was a release. It was yeah. a way to figure out what was going to happen next. And then having success um, doing it was like, okay, well, you can do this. You can keep it going. You can pay your bills. You know, you can. I actually so check this out. So I had a I had a Infinity G thirty seven X sweet car, sweet <laughs> car, man. Black, the the twenty inch wheels on it, two door. Coop, leather, all super decked out nice. You're right. After I got fired, bro, I had to sell it. I was like, I got to get rid of this car. <laughs> I, I like the car. I still want to keep it, yeah. but I need to get rid of it. I have to downgrade. I have, I, I'm not making six figures anymore. I'm making zero right now. I got to figure out how to, how to take a step back, how to go backward a little bit, eat some humble pie, and figure out how – to work my way back up. Hmm. And uh, that's what we ended up doing. So, I mean, it, it was definitely but the whole experience um, of, of being let go, the whole experience of starting over, the whole experience of becoming an entrepreneur um, has been a very, very uh, enlightening uh, situation. Uh, it makes right. you go back to things that you wouldn't necessarily, you wouldn't necessarily think about. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, it was definitely for the best. And a lot of people came in and in my life and, and we're able to help a lot of people that were in my life that shouldn't have been there were out. Yeah. So it was very, it was very, uh, very enlightening, very uh, helpful to be able to see uh, the other side and, and get a different perspective on things in general. Hey, that's what's up there, bro. That is up. Hey, um, what's easier sponsoring someone and sitting in a bag watching or bowling on your own dime? So what I'll tell you about that, I think it depends on the situation. I think sponsoring is easier if the money's not an issue, right? If the money's the issue, then it probably is bowling. Because if you don't, if, if you're on your own, it's your own money and you, and you, you know, you got to strike to eat, but it's all on you. If you don't do it, then, you know, there's nobody to blame. There's nothing, there's nothing you could do about it. That's just how it worked out, right? If you're right. sponsoring somebody and the money's tight, man, bro, that's 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 rough. That's hard because it's not just you; it's you and them. You know, now you got somebody else that's that's relying on this too. Yeah. So it, I've seen it go both ways. I had sponsored people for quite a long time, um, and I've you know been a bowler myself quite a long time. So I've seen it go both ways, and I've been in both positions where, in one case, it's better to be the sponsor; in one case, it's better to be the bowler. Hey, there you go. Hey, what's your biggest fear when it comes to CTD? Biggest fear? Let's see. 
That's a good question too. Um, I don't know. I think oh, I'll tell you what it is. I know what it is. <laughs> always, it's always making sure that you are focused on the end game. And let me explain that, right? So the end game from day one has been to educate, right? Yeah. And I've seen situations where people or companies or industries have swayed away from, from that, helping bowlers get better in our case. Because uh, when you do that, that's when you fall. That's when you do things. That's when things happen. That's when um, a lot of negativity will come into your life and will destroy you. So I think it's, I think for me, it's about always staying focused on the goal, helping bowlers, uh, staying faithfully to, to, to that goal. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, so I, I, I make sure that I have people around me that can help. They can help. Cause this whole thing, this entrepreneurship thing is new. Like this is new for me. I didn't plan on doing it. I planned on getting a job and designing bowling balls till I was 80 and then, you know, retire and then die. Like that was the plan. So when the entrepreneurship thing came up, it was like, well, this is a whole different deal. Like the mindset's different. The way you approach things is different. The way you go to market, the way you interact with people, the people you surround yourself with, everything that you do is different. And you've got to make sure you're very cognizant of who you are around, who you associate with, what you do, and what your end game is, what your goal is. Because at the end of the day, when you're an entrepreneur, you're on your own. If it works, that's because of you. Right. It doesn't work. That's because of you. And you're talking about your livelihood here. So it's a big, big deal to make sure that your intention is right. So yeah. rounding yourself with the right people to help keep you on that intention, keep you making sure that you're focused on this, on the right goal. And um, I think that's probably the, the biggest fear is making sure that I'm always connected to people that can help me do and stay on the right uh uh, intention of being able to help bowlers become better. And the good thing is I got a great support system. My mom and dad are there. My partner's there. I've got a lot of people around me that are there that, that do understand and do help um, with that. So, you know, that's, that's the key, man. You got to figure out where you want to be, how you want to get there and then execute. That's what's up there, bro. Uh, Michael J. Slacky. What up, big Mike? He said, what is the toughest hurdle in marketing CTD? The toughest hurdle is really just getting the word out there, right? So it's just exposure. When you're small and you are getting started, nobody knows who you are. So it's about getting exposure. So how do you get exposure? Who do you talk to? You know, jumping on this 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 pod, this podcast with you is exposure. That's the challenge. How do you connect? You know, I've known you for a while, so it, you know, it was, hey man, can I? How do I get on your podcast? That that's that that's the conversation that happened. I yeah. sent you a message and I was like, hey, I see what you're doing. How do I get on? And what we made it happen. <laughs> like, hey, no problem. We'll get you on when you want to do it. So that's the challenge. Yeah. The challenge is figuring out how to continue to get more exposure. So right. if you get the exposure, people can see your intention. They see your intention, then the rest works. If you're doing the right thing, then it, then you're, you'll be fine. And if you're not, you won't be fine. So, <laughs> you know, for, from, from our standpoint, it's just about continuing to get that exposure uh, right. to, to the different, to different people in bowling. So, that's what's up there, bro. Um, anybody else got any questions? Like I said, shoot your questions. Um, if, like I said, we missed a question, uh, I'm sure Ron can go back or tag Ron in your question, and he can uh, answer it off of Facebook. Hit him up. Um, Ron, anything you want us to know? Or what is, though, no, it's not anything. Tell us something. Well, we I have a couple more questions over here, too, my man. So we can hit, hit a couple of them up, too. I see uh, Jerry said, what's the future of CTD? Any changes with the real SBC rules? Where uh, I see I missed that. Wait, where is it at? Talk to me. 844. Oh, boy. Uh oh I missed that on. Yeah, no worries. Look, I, mean, I, told you, I told you if I miss it. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I said. Teamwork, bro. I got oh, you. Jerry, bam. There we go. Jerry Johnson. Yeah, so what's, what's the future, the future of, the C of the CTD yep. and any challenges with the USBC rules? I appreciate you. Look, I told you. Yeah. So, I mean, basically, like I said, our, our whole future is set up, is set up, to continue to grow bowling with education. So we're going to do some things. We're going to make some more investments in the sport of bowling that are going to allow us to be able to do education on a much higher level at a much larger scale. That's what we're going to do. In terms of the USBC rules, we like rule changes. Rule changes work in our favor because we're creative. We're creative. So, you know, everybody, 
you know, we, we, I, we see the comments and, and especially when, when we were doing the ball cleaner purple stuff at the time when USBC made another rule change, we had three products that were out and both of them, all three of them were made to be used during competition. USBC said, Hey, we're going to make a rule change that says you can't do that anymore. And everybody's like, Oh no, you guys are in trouble, but that's not how we operate. So, excuse me. So for us, it was like, okay, well, we'll just pivot. So now instead of doing the ball cleaner, we'll do sanding pads, which is a good thing for us because here's the deal. If you're on Storm staff mm -hmm. or Brunswick staff, or it doesn't matter. You're going to eat ball company staff. You may not use our ball cleaner because they got their own ball cleaner. But when we switch and launch sanding pads, you can use your sanding pads. Everybody's sanding pads. So, right. so we're cool with rule changes. Um, we, we we can we we can find ways to stay relevant and pivot. Like I said, we, we this whole thing came up with the with the mask situation. We got a mask. USBC made a rule change about the. The isopropyl alcohol, we got isopropyl alcohol. So we're cool with that. We will always follow the USBC rules. We know USBC's intention is correct. What they're trying to do is preserve the integrity of the sport. Whether we agree or disagree, that's a, a, another story. But nonetheless, we will always follow the rules and we'll always adhere to the rules. We can we can take those rules and we can uh, uh, make, make products that follow those rules and allow us to stay competitive and relevant in the industry. Ah, there you go. Yeah. And see, that's and that's where it's and that's what it's all about, right there, man. And like I said, you you are going in the right direction in a in a positive way. You know, like I said, they change the rule, and you're not one of those guys to be like, oh, okay, well, and, and so negative towards that rule change. You say, okay, you change the rule, okay, fine, not a problem. We're going to do it this way now. That's the engineering, me, man. Like that's <laughs> the best thing about being an engineer is you figure out how to take things apart and put them back together. So. With this kind of thing, and I see Tyrone asked a question about what makes our sanding pads different. Yeah, so I, I just see now. You can tie them together. So here's the thing: we're I'm a bowler, so I use these products. And when we were using the Avalon product, which I liked, I used, we talked about it the whole nine. We 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 noticed that the pads didn't last very long, but we didn't have any way to know what kind of grit we were getting. So I went and spent two thousand bucks and bought a surface scanner. And when I started scanning bowling balls, I'm like, well, wait a minute. This pad says 2,000 grit, and it's leaving a 3,500 grit surface on my ball. And that's a lot higher than what I thought. Well, why is that? Well, let me grab the 500 grit. Well, the 500 grit's cutting the ball at 1,400. What? That's weird. So then we said, oh, well, 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 how come there's not a sanding pad in bowling that cuts at what it says it cuts at? So we grab the you know, Sire pads. We grab the other pads. We check them all, and they're all like, none of them are close. Like, they're not even nowhere in the ballpark close. So I'm like, okay, cool. So – why don't we design a pad that works specifically for bowling balls? So I don't care what the grit say. I want the grit on the pad to match what it says on the bowling ball. So right. we, took, we went to our supplier and we're like, send us a whole bunch of pads and we're going to test them. And then I'll come back and tell you which grit is our 2000 grit. So he gave me a whole bunch of pads, did a whole bunch of testing. I was like, I don't know what this pad is for you, but this pad is going to be called the True Cut 2000 grit. And that's what makes our pads different. Uh, they, they're going to last a lot longer. They're a lot more versatile uh, and they cut what they said they cut. And one of the challenges as an entrepreneur, especially being a small company, is people don't people won't don't take your word for what you say. Right. So, so as a result of that, you have to back it up. You need to have some proof. Well, once again, as an engineer, like that's what engineering is all about. Right? It's all about the data. So yeah. every time we do something, we got tons and tons and tons of data to back it up which then ultimately gives you credibility when people begin to question or when people begin to challenge. You can right. bring up some data. Um, and we we publish and put that information out, uh, especially on the YouTube channel, for people to be able to, to do their own research. I tell people all the time, you don't have to believe what we say. Yeah. Question it, ask questions, go test it yourself. And by doing that, people get to see it. And when they see it, you know, they 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 ultimately say, oh, well, yeah, I mean, what you're saying is legit. Because we spent the time, money, energy, and effort to go back up the claim, to be able to make sure that this product does what we say. We just did a product for, um, it's called True Cut Conditioner. Uh -huh. It's actually a product, it's a liquid product that you spray on the sanding pad to make the sanding pad last longer. And people go, well, why would you do that? Like, like if you're selling sanding pads, then why would you sell a product that makes the sanding pad last longer? That's gonna hurt your business. And I'm like, you don't get it. The goal <laughs> is to have people enjoy the experience. So if I make a, a, a liquid product that will make the pad last longer, that makes the pad cut longer, and that makes the pad um, cut better, then 
ultimately that customer who bought our pad is going to be happier. If yep. they're happier, they're going to be a customer for a lot longer period of time. And that all ends up, ends up being good in the long run. So I'm right. about to try to solve these problems because I was in the boat. Man, at a tournament, got to dry sand my ball, dry sand my ball, dust is everywhere. It's a big mess. Um, you know, trying to get the dust out of the pad. The pad loads up. Wipe the ball with ball cleaner to get all the excess off. It's a disaster. And it was right. like, why don't we solve that problem? Well, let's do that. Let's go make ourselves a product that will solve this problem that you can do before you start bowling league that won't be a big mess, that will be easy, that will be self-cleaning, that won't create all this drama for people around you when you're sanding your bowling ball. Right. That's what and that's how that's how all of our stuff is, is geared to work. Wow. And we're, we are, be, because of we're small, we're very agile, we can make these moves really, really quick. And I think that's why we've been able to go from zero you know, to 3,000 staffers in, in just over five years. We Our fifth, our five-year anniversary was May uh, 8th. Okay. Five-year anniversary. So, And we've got some really, really big things planned that, that are coming now that are really going to help us to continue this whole educational growth. Because like I said, we're getting a lot of support from people. We've got a lot of people on our staff. And at the end of the day, it's because of that support, which is why we're still here and why we're able to continue to grow. Hey, that's what's up there, bro. Uh, Jerry said, "Do you uh, did you have a product that just flat out failed? Always have products that fail. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, you've got to have a fair amount of failures to get to the success. You know, you, right. you 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 we when we first tried, so we have a product called the Clear, and the Clear is a bowling ball restoration product. So if you have a bowling ball that's lost performance." Yeah. You put your bowling ball in this product called the clear, let it sit for an hour, take it off, follow the instructions, and your bowling ball performance will increase. It will bring it back to like it was when it was brand new. It works well enough that you could put a brand new ball in it, and it'll make a brand new ball hook more. Before that product, we had a product called Hook Juice. And Hook Juice was an attempt to do the same thing that the clear was. But Hook Juice had a whole lot of caveats to it. It didn't work universally on all bowling balls. Um mm -hmm. It could stain the bowling ball, yada, yada, yada. So we actually put that out as a kind of a, a – we put it out as a product. Um, but for a very, very short period of time, we're like, no, nah, that's not it. Yank that off. And we need to we need to make a better product here. Right. So, yes, we have failures. We have failures all the time. Um, but but it's, a, it's the using that engineering process uh, to be able to figure out um, where the failure occurred then to be able to rectify it, and then to be able to go forward. And ultimately, that's what we've been able to do with the products that we actually launch. We have a, we have a test group, too. We have a, I didn't talk about this. We have a whole other test group called the VIP group. Our VIP group is a select group of people that get to try out products before they come to market. So they they get to try out all kinds of wild and crazy stuff right. before they come to market. And they help us to determine whether or not what we're doing uh, is the right move, or is, no, no, that's that's too wrong, or, or they don't do that, or yeah, go to that route. So Absolutely. Yeah. Like Omar, True Cut is definitely my favorite pads. Every tournament players you have them from 360 to 5K. My man, appreciate that. No doubt. No doubt. I mean, instead, at the end of the day, for us, that pivoting, that pivoting yeah. from the ball cleaner to the sanding pads was a, was a good move, and it was predicated off of the USB-C rule change. Because like I said, you may not use our ball cleaner, but everybody likes our sanding pads. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, and we and we just keep we just keep going. We just keep trying to go down that path. We like we like all the ball companies. We work with all the ball companies. We're friendly toward all of them. They're friendly back toward us. They understand that that you know CTD Ron Hicklin is staying in this little lane right here. You know, we got our own little lane right now. We're staying in that lane. We're not trying to step on anybody's toes. We're not trying to create you know, problems for anybody. Like I said, if you're on 900 Global staff and you got a ball cleaner and you want to use their ball cleaner, you can use theirs. You ain't got to use ours. You know what I'm saying? Right. We're totally cool with that. Whatever makes you happy, whatever makes you comfortable. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's about trying to grow bowling. The ball companies understand that. They let us have our little lane. They support us. And uh, it, it's, it's been a beautiful relationship so far. So really excited about it. There we go, man. Hey, guys, like I said, if you missed it, man, um, my boy Ron here really uh, gave us some great information. Like I said, he gave us some life history, uh, some life about himself. If you guys missed it, like I said, uh, go back and watch the show, man. And I truly, truly appreciate him reaching out because – I, his name was already on my list, but he beat me to the punch. He beat me to the punch, and um, we made it happen. Guys, like I said, man, hey, if you want to come on the show and share your story, that's what this is about. It's it's not it's a platform for us to know the bowler outside the bowler. And like I said, we know, we've seen Ron bowl. We've seen Ron at work when he's over there doing his demo and hitting your ball, cleaning your ball and, and at tournaments. We've seen it all. 
And, and you know, he, like I said, he opened up a little with us today to share some of his life story. So I, uh, me, myself, I truly appreciate that, bro. Man, thank you for having me on, man. I really appreciate the opportunity just to be able to talk about the stories and explain and, and kind of go, go back and forth. It's good catching up with you, too. So definitely appreciate the opportunity to be on the show, man. Oh, absolutely, brother. And like, man, hey, you keep the family safe. And uh, I said, I'm going to reach out to you. You just shot me your number. So, um, hey, expect a call uh, shortly. Awesome. Looking forward to it. Looking forward right. to it. Cool. Hey, brother. Well, look, stay safe out there, man. And um, I'm sure I'll catch you at one of these tournaments very soon. Absolutely. Y'all have a great night, man. Thank you. Appreciate right, it. You too, bro. Later. Guys, that was my boy, Ron Hicklin, man. Uh, very, very down to earth, very knowledgeable guy. Like I said, he's here to educate the bowlers. That's what this, uh, that's what CTD is. It's CTD is, is the brand to educate bowlers. And that's what he likes. He talked about it. And I, I truly appreciate him coming on and, and spending a, a hour with us today. So, uh, like I said, if you missed if you missed it, please go back and check it out. Um, just it, it was a great show. Like I said I've learned more about Ron today than I have reading about him or seeing anything about him, uh, you know, on TV or reading or anything else. So uh, it's really cool interview, man. So hit that share button. And just like I said, do what you do, guys. Uh, next show is Thursday. Guys, be ready. And then the following week, I'll be at three days a week. So I'll be reaching out to some people. Uh, I have some really, really, really great shows coming up uh, within the next uh, next week. So I'm pretty excited about it. So just get, tune in and uh, be ready, man. Uh, I appreciate all you guys. I appreciate all the support. It really means a lot to me. So, um as always, I have to yeah, begin with the show, I begin with the song, and end with the song. But this is this is what it do. Uh, I got a strike while the iron is hot. One of one, don't follow flocks. Man, I got this on lock. Team Harvey, team hustle, team can't be stopped. Just cop 900 blowing. Yep, I'm fresh out the shop. Let's call it rolling. I'm an expert on the lane. Yeah. Smooth approach, about to roll a perfect game. Honey. And well connected with the sports biggest names. Love. We can't talk unless an X on the frame. I'm here asking the questions, clear the air and confusion. Fresh, humble, and arrogant with the logo infusion. Red cup for the right vibe. I got the answers. You going live with both sides. That's right, y'all. Went live with both sides this evening, man. I hope everybody. Has a great evening. Have a great Wednesday, man. And um, as always, dude, I love you guys, man. Be safe. And if God is willing, I'll see all you guys on Thursday, man. Uh, much love. Peace out.